Good afternoon and welcome to Purdue University and the Serious Security Seminar. Our speaker today is Dr. Kenji Takahashi from NTT uh, Information Sharing Platform Laboratories in Tokyo. Uh, his research interests include identity management for next generation networks and his topic today is trends in identity management. Dr. Takahashi. Hi, good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Uh, my name is Kenji Takahashi. I'm going to talk about trends in identity management. So let me introduce who we are. I mean, uh, let me introduce my identity or our identity. So NTT, uh, I belong to uh, NTT's uh, R&D center. And under NTT, there are several companies, including Docomo and other telecommunication companies. And at the R&D R&D center, we are working for these operating companies. So as you see, uh, NTT is a huge company, but current uh, dollar rate must be, uh, revenues must be much bigger, I guess. So let me go through agenda. I'm going to talk about identity management and mostly talking about standardization. Right now, uh, there, there are many um, compete, kind of com competing standardization for the uh, uh, identity management. So I'm going to talk about the uh, trends and uh, uh, most importantly how we can work together towards the harmoni harmonization of those stand standards. And also uh, I'd like to uh, I mean, discuss uh, some use cases and uh, lesson learned from the use cases and conclusion on the future that direction. So here is uh, t identity management, as you know, maybe um, increasing, increasingly important because of uh, those four uh, perspectives, uh, tougher compliance requirements, greater security issues, and changing business climates and emerging services oriented society. So many things are outsourced and uh, our society and industry are becoming more service oriented. And for instance, for compliance, as you know, SOX Act and also in Europe, EU Article 27, also in Japan, there is a uh, personal information uh, protection act has been uh, effect since uh, last year. Also, uh, FFIEC required required stronger authentication for online banking. And as you know, in, from the security program, identity theft, for instance, uh, 45 billion damage. Uh, sounds like a recent Wall Street, Wall Street meltdown. So, and also from business. There's a lot of pressure from business sides, uh, M&A, and also uh, globalization, uh, flattening world. Those uh, business pressure uh, requires uh, more efficient identity management. So market forecast says, as you see here, uh, 26 billion in 2006, and uh, in two, two 2014, uh, it would be a, it would be a 12.3 billion. But I don't know that, that. I mean, considering current economic situation, maybe I mean the number may be uh, smaller. But uh, and also a uh, service orientation, so personalization, web 2.0, and uh, cloud compu computing or SaaS or other outsourcing trends are demanding more efficient and effective identity management. And uh, this is my view of uh, computing industry, actually. I, I've been working on in, uh, in I, I, IT industry for more than 20 years uh, in Silicon Valley in, and in Tokyo. Uh, now people call it attention economy. People are paying, uh, paying for services by paying attention. So uh, it's kind of passive and implicit and enterprise-centric. But in future, I hope uh, 
intention economy will come, and in the intention economy, I mean identity will, I mean will play a major role, and it should be a proactive, explicit, and user centric. And I mean from, uh, I mean looking back in eighties, client OS is a competitive edge and major battleground for the IT industry, and in nineties many people forget about uh, Netscape, but uh, at that time, Netscape and Microsoft had uh, fought each other, and Microsoft won. But in right now, in these decades, uh, Google is a champion, and uh, they got uh, lots of attention, and uh, leading a market industry, I mean, advertised industry. And then in next, Decades, I hope identity will uh, um, make uh, play a major role, and maybe key player would be uh, Facebook and so on. And I mean, uh, observing current situation in, for instance, in consumer market, SNS, blog, photo sharing, Second Life, Twitter, those kind of uh, services, identity uh, is a key. I mean, component and also enterprise, e-government, uh, industry sector, audit trail, strong authentication, single sign-on, e-government services, and national security, anti-terrorism uh, uh, major. Those are very much related to identity management. And what is identity management? So, I mean, I just, uh, consulted uh, several online dictionaries. It says uh, that set of behavior or personal characteristics by which an individual is recognizable as a member of group. This is uh, very related to identity management. Also, uh, integrity is also important. The sense of self providing same sameness and continuity in personality over time. Uh, in that sense, I mean, this portion, behavior, behavioral or personal characteristics, I'm going to call it um, identity data. It includes name, domicile, age, gender, I mean, social security number, passport number, or those kind of things. Also, uh, maybe in cyber world, it could be a Google ID, email address, and so on. Also, relationships or reputation those kind of social aspects is a very important uh, identity data. And what is identity data management? Um, um, this is my uh, try, is uh, let an individual control and use its identity in a sec secure and privacy protected manner by managing the integrity of identity through its life cycle and then this leads a question that uh, what is privacy? Then maybe uh, I'm gonna a little bit talk about uh, privacy. Actually, everybody talks about privacy, so I'm uh, stupid enough to try here. So I mean, as actually uh, privacy was dead, most of you guys uh, was bo were born actually in 19. 69, uh, Jerry Rosenberg said in discussion of census, uh, he said privacy is dead. And privacy has been dead, has died several times actually. I mean, uh, Scott McNary said uh, privacy is dead in, t I mean, in, in regards of, uh, with regards of uh, maybe web usage and also. Uh, actual network sub surveillance is uh, avail I mean, available everywhere, it is used everywhere. For instance, London is very famous or notorious for the surveillance. And uh, I mean, ironically, I uh, read a book called Understanding Privacy, but it's in the, on the first page, it says uh, privacy is a, uh, it, nobody can artic articulate what it means. So, but this is, I think uh, this is natural because, I mean, uh, we, privacy is, um, 
I mean, uh, based on uh, space, we are we we act. So uh, our activities uh, goes beyond other spaces. I mean, you need uh, another type of privacy, and privacy is born. Privacy is dead and born in uh, different spaces. So, I mean, my point here is notion of privacy is uh, changing over time, and the kind of reincarnation. And here is uh, my view of privacy in from perspective of federated identity management. I mean, general. I mean, very generally speaking, uh, general ac generally accepted definition of privacy is basically right to control the access to personal data. And uh, here I'd like to define that uh, privacy is right to control the unlinkability. Uh, so in from the federated identity management, privacy protection means the implementation of user controllable unlinkability. Un unlinkability means here is identity, real me, I mean, probably represented by my DNA and my life. And then here is identify and identifier, like uh, my account in uh, my my email address or S social security number. And then here is the event. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, <laughs> this is much younger than real me, but at, for instance, 25 years old. And, or maybe I bought some book somewhere. And those events should be, I mean, link between my account and event should be unlinkable. Or at least I can control this unlinkability or unlinkability and then between these two two for instance anonymity is a uh, is a way of protecting privacy just uh, just make this oh, make this link unlinkable and here is a canonical view of identity uh, for instance, you can in, by introducing pseudonym oh, here, so you can uh, control link, unlinkability or linkability between account and uh, other account. Uh, also, you could have uh, another account uh, linked to uh, this account, and then in that way you can do. A, I I'm gonna explain later, but in that way you can do a single sign-on if you uh, re authenticate it as a account A. Account A, maybe account A, you can also authenticate it as a account B and account C too. So, also, I mean, maybe this guy has another account. So, the, this set we call it a persona, so different character set. So maybe I, I, I have a, a persona as an employee of company, or I can be a father of family as a persona here, and both live in Tokyo and bought a house or something like that. Or a, a identity could be a collective, so that, I mean, uh, account X is my family, so uh, several more than one identity can be linked to a uh, one account. So, uh, over overview of standardization. Uh, there are several, m mainly three major uh, initiatives exist today: Liberty Alliance, Samo Information Card, and Open ID. Uh, you guys know these all these three. Have you ever had had? about these three standardization? Or have we ever used these uh, standards? Maybe, maybe yes. So, and harmonization is offer, efforts are in progress and adoption is increasing in many different industries like uh, e-government, enterprise, telecom, social networks, services, and such. And again, let me 
go into uh, details of uh, each three major initiatives. Information card is uh, actually, I mean, it, it's a little bit confusing. People call it card space or information card, but card space is a uh, uh, kind uh, Windows-based uh, implementation of information card. So information card is a managing identity as a set of cards, just like credit cards. So you can have a many uh, cards as a, as I explained as a persona. So persona as a card. So you can manage uh, each persona as a card, and then I mean present or show that cards to specific services. So ma major players, of, of course, are. Uh, Microsoft and other big company like Google, Nobel, Oracle, they just, um, this year they established the Information Card Foundation and Liberty and Samo. This is, I think, our oldest, kind of oldest um, uh, initiative. So manage, managing identities by federation and major players, including NTT and other big company. Like, I don't know why, but there are many uh, telecommunication companies in Liberty Alliance, including BT, France Telecom, and so on. And OpenID is uh, recently becoming very popular and um, managing identity as a URI. So use a URI as an identity so that you can use that identity everywhere. So major players include uh, Google, IBM, Microsoft, Verisign. Actually, uh, Microsoft, just yesterday, Microsoft announced that they will support uh, OpenID in Windows Live services. And actually, this is very complicated. So that, that is the uh, uh, biggest problem for our for us as a service provider. So there are many, so many uh, standardization efforts. So actually I have to, I have to make a change every week or every month to this, I mean, uh, slides. So here is a newly founded uh, as an organization like Open Social Foundation uh, for Social Network API and OOS and so on. So, I mean, it's really hard for us to, even for us to follow the standardization activities. And also, uh, and it related to many industries like internet, even broadcast, and also uh, healthcare, education, and uh, of course related to telecom. So, recently, SAMO is uh, uh, become a uh, ITUT uh, recommendation. Just like X.509, uh, SAMU, is, SAMU 2.0 is right now, has, is uh, X1, X1141, X1141. And also a uh, big discussion in identity management in ITUT right now. And also uh, in ISOC. ISOC is a kind of a parent organization of IETF. Uh, that there is a big initiatives are going on about trust and identity. And let me go through our Liberty Alliance project. I myself is uh, uh, been involved actively involved in uh, Liberty Alliance project activities. It's in established in uh, um, seven years ago, and. Uh, uh, over 150 members from a wide, wide range of un industry and sectors around the world. And some members from party universities are also participating in some activities. Uh, and also uh, activities uh, include, uh, of course, uh, right, I mean, develops a technical specification. But also we are working on uh, business guidelines and use case white papers and public policy papers and so on. And uh, we provide open forum to discuss digital identities. Also uh, in uh, many, I mean, uh, vertical and uh, horizontal industries. In, I mean, local chapters and also uh, industry specific uh, 
special interest group like health, e-government, and identity theft pre prevention or something like that, and organizing con conformance testing. Actually, uh, uh, this Liberty Alliance uh, conformance test is required by GSA for procurement. So you, if you'd like to, I mean, uh, sell products to GSA, you have to, I mean, pass the test. And here is uh, Liberty Technology Architecture. Uh, Liberty is uh, developed uh, IDFF and eventually it involved, evolved into uh, SAML 2.0. That is basically for a single sign-on here. Uh, here. And also uh, some uh, web services framework. This is for, uh, for instance, uh, mashing up web services. And when mashing up, mashing, mashing up, mashing up uh, web services, you need uh, some authorization uh, mechanism for, so that uh, one service can access to another service for uh, uh, personal data. Uh, in that case, you need uh, some authorization mechanism. So IDWSF provides such uh, uh, authorization mechanism as well as uh, discovery services for web services. And here is, uh, uh, de in digital identity management, uh, life cycle management is very important. Fr from st starting from the uh, birth to the death of identity. Um, if actually, in the market, I mean, provisioning accounts for, uh, right now, half of the market. But uh, oil account, oil account for two thirds by two or fourteen. So I mean, when people talk, talk about identity management, they are mainly focused on uh, single sign-on or authentication. But uh, managing identity life cycle, especially I mean provisioning and, and change control, those kind of things are very important in the market perspectives. And um, the Liberty uh, provides uh, many uh, different kinds of specification to support all phases of uh, identity life cycle. Oh, by the way, if you have any question, please ask uh, anytime. So here is some assertion markup, uh, S security assertion markup language. We call it SAMO. So it's a XML based framework for expressing assertion claims about identity of user. And also, it, uh, it also comes with protocols for moving those assertions around and maintained by OASIS, uh, originally developed by Liberty. And when assertion and protocols are used together, most, most notable application is for single sign-on, but uh, you can use some of, for, for instance, authorization or attribute exchange. And uh, assertion are uh, uh, used as a security token or identity token format in information card. And some, some of is successful in, especially in enterprise financial, e-government, and higher education. Uh, Shibori's 2.0 is right now that's exactly the same as Summer 2.0. Uh, maybe I'm gonna skip this. Uh, oh, yeah. And here is identity federation process. So uh, to use a federated uh, like single sign-on, you you have to go through this process. I mean, first user. I mean, this is a user-centric. Uh, Process so user can user users can themselves uh, federate two different accounts and then and then you use that federated account you can uh, do a single sign on and then use uh, access and use services and then uh, close single sign on session. This is also important and Liberty protocols or some protocol provides a single logout. So just single sign-on is a little bit dangerous because you sign-ons, I mean, many 
uh, many services and I mean if you don't sign out it's a very I mean it causes a very uh, serious security problem so for to avoid that problem but Samo provides a single logout function too and eventually also at the user's choice you users can defederate accounts if you'd like to you if you'd like to I mean if you don't need the single sign on anymore for the specific service and here is o overview of again I mean you need uh, users ha first have to federate identity and then use a single sign-on. Uh, here is uh, privacy identity federation from the uh, view of privacy protection. So link, uh, in SAMO, uh, SAML, uh, IDP and SP accounts uh, over users by pseudonym as I explained before. So this eliminates need for global ID and mitigate risk of unintended disclosure of real account names and also uh, ensure unlinkability of SP accounts. So that in that way I mean uh, user can I mean control unlinkability and and therefore you can I uh, protect privacy or you can control privacy and here is uh, some single sign-on procedure let me this is important so let me go through uh, details of uh, this process so first user request for the service at the service providers and then service providers uh, need to authenticate the user then so uh, goes to uh, IDP via I mean HTTP redirect browser, browser redirect so that I mean through this via user I mean SP service providers goes to uh, IDP to request uh, assertion for for authentication basically and then uh, between user and identity provider uh, authentication has been sh should be executed and then I mean for the authenticate you can use any authentication method I mean SAMO is uh, ag agnostic to uh, authentication method so you can use password or you can use uh, uh, PKI or biometric and so on but important point here is that uh, so that authentication context uh, should be conveyed to a uh, service provider because I mean service provider depend on uh, authentication to uh, IDP so they like to know how users are authenticated maybe if we user just uh, authenticated by a uh, user and password they they don't want to provide a uh, serious or I mean high cost high cost services and in that case they I mean de request uh, stronger authentication in in this I mean procedures and then after authentication has been done goes to uh, step four uh, IDP sends assertion with uh, as, uh, with uh, authentication context which represents how users are authenticated and then verify as a service provider verify assertion and then uh, user can access to, access to service and uh, use the services and also for the second service so user don't have to uh, do uh, authentication I mean you can uh, users can step skip step three so that you, they don't have to authenticate again and then uh, you use uh, services without login procedure this is a single sign-on mechanism so users don't have any uh, spe special uh, 
software. Users just need a standard web browser. That's the beauty of uh, some web SSO protocols. And uh, maybe I'm gonna skip this. <laughs> this is a. I mean, point here is that there is another way of doing single sign-on. So there are lots of way. I mean, this is specific scenario for the HTTP some web SSO. And as I said, some uh, as a whole give a develop deployer the choice of communication mechanism. So they designed for different purposes and environments. But I'm gonna, s s for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip this. But authentication context is a very important notion. So I'm gonna refer data. And maybe this is canonical view of some assertion. Maybe I'm gonna skip. And the important point here is, uh, some assertion again uh, can be used in uh, three different purposes. Authentication, which I explained, but it also can be used for authorization and also uh, attribute exchange, so that you can uh, express some attribute like I'm uh, 40 years old, or I'm a male, or I'm an Asian, or something like that in the state. At statement. There are different kind of statement. Authent Here is authentication statement, but uh, there, there is a authorization statement and a attribute statement so that you can convey other kind of information. And maybe I'm going to skip this. But, um, and Liberty ID WSF is a uh, another framework. Uh, this is a SOAP based framework for locating and invoking identity based web services. So, permission based, at, uh, main application is permission based attribute sharing and invoking service under control of user. And sub subscription and notification is also uh, provided by IDWSF and the summer assertion as a default security token. Let me explain a uh, special case of sharing user attribute of a uh, service provider with another service provider on demand. This is a, I mean, kind of mash up uh, scenario so that, I mean, SP1 service and SP2 service are uh, mashed up. In that case, currently, I mean, they are for instance, in Google or Flickr, there are very no, I mean, authorization at all. That is a very dangerous from security perspectives. But I mean, in this mechanism, I mean, uh, when when service a service access to uh, other service web service for uh, specific data, I mean, that that service can convey uh, who, I mean, convey the information uh, about for whom that service is on, on behalf of whom uh, that service access to the information. In that way, I mean, uh, con you can control the access to the personal data. So first, um, single sign on to uh, IDP and then uh, and then request a service with some assertion and then request information for uh, access to an identity service uh, for, but uh, as to provide the service SP1 needs uh, some data uh, managed by SP2 then maybe first SP1 Ro should locate wh where the data is. So ask the discovery service and saying that I'm, I'm, I need, I need uh, this data, uh, some specific data on behalf of uh, this lady. And that kind of information are uh, uh, conveyed by Samo, and then, I mean, uh, information is going 
back to a service provider one and then using that uh, location information and uh, kind of access ticket uh, they access to uh, SP2 so now he, he, this guy knows where he, it is and then uh, auth authorization ticket then with that ticket and location information access to SP2 and then access SP2 prove that uh, this guy is uh, access on behalf of this lady then I mean provide that kind of information but before that I mean uh, you can with this mechanism you can uh, ask for a uh, consent from uh, from this user so uh, in, in step four request for uh, uh, this service request for a user profile but uh, sp2 really I mean uh, confirm that uh, users consent by uh, it called interaction service but uh, on demand then after getting consent from the user it provides a user profile and then finally it provides a service to users in that way I mean you can uh, provide a mashed up service with uh, uh, security and uh, privacy protection uh, maybe I have a 30 minutes okay so IDWS people services just for uh, for for instance social network services so um, maybe I'm gonna skip this but if you are interested in I don't have enough time but if you are interested in uh, I mean search for people service in Liberty Island site so and as a topic is identity governance framework we are working on this it's in progress so I'm gonna skip this and another important uh, project we are working on identity assurance framework so people sometimes ask uh, how I mean they need uh, some assurance level how trustworthy the identity is I mean in the government application or I mean military services that kind of assurance level is very important they said I mean so that we are working on a uh, framework to I mean explain assurance level of identity uh, right now there are four levels uh, from uh, little or no confidence to a very high level of confidence so that you can use uh, for a criminal investigation or military uh, military services uh, so it requires uh, multi-factor remote authentication with the hard hardware-based tokens and such. And uh, maybe I'm going to skip. So uh, information card is again provide a constant user interface for users. Uh, this is okay. And um, this is the use one of the user interface. Uh, you guys have you ever used? Uh, information card Pro oh you you okay but I mean it's um, not I mean in, in my impression it's not so widely used yet but I think um, it's a great user interface and she can be com combined with other uh, protocols such for instance open ID and SAML so I mean it's a complemental complementary technology I guess but anyway uh, consist information card consists of three components identity selector this is most important components in my opinion uh, again this is identity selector so that you can choose which persona or which card you can you wanna use right now it has a two cards and oh yeah uh, right now he has uh, six cards and then this is a history cards you 
uh, I sent to the, that site and then maybe you can use another card, different card and so on. And um, security token server is a uh, card itself doesn't I mean include store any information. It's a kind of uh, link to a uh, data. So the so real data is stored in security token server. So that if if you send a card, I mean with that information in the card, I mean real data is will will be sent by security token server and the relying party of course uh, consume that kind of identity data uh, so this is a little bit de detail but by the way open source software is available so I mean, you can use uh, identity selector even in a Unix uh, environment. Also, uh, Mac too. And maybe I'm gonna skip this. But uh, this is a flow of inf information card. And oh, OpenID 2.0. Uh, 2.0 is an important portion. Actually, there is, of course, there is OpenID 1.1 and 1.2 uh, or something. But uh, in 2.0 version, uh, similar protocols are merged into one. And then, and then at that time, OpenID is be has been becoming very popular. And uh, it's uh, uh, used in uh, many major sites like again Google and recently Windows Live uh, announced to support uh, OpenID. Actually, in actually it is very similar to uh, some protocol I which I explain. Actually, OpenID 2.0 flow is um, flow is very similar. Actually, use a uh, HTTP redirection and different point is that uh, only different point is how to locate identity provider because I mean user uh, provides a location of IDP as a URL so I mean service provider easily finds a open ID location open ID provider location that's the main difference but other pro protocol of sequence are almost the same and of course open ID use a, a global ID so use a set exactly the same ID for any or other uh, relying parties so that may cause uh, some uh, privacy problem maybe but uh, much much lighter protocol than some that that is uh, one of the reason people are uh, use as uh, open ID 2.0 and standard standardization status open ID is uh, uh, currently completed uh, single sign-on and attri attribute exchange and in PAPE, actually, authentic open ID provider authentication pro policy extension is called PAPE PAPE. Uh, recently, I think a standardization process recently uh, completed. Maybe uh, at the draft level, but uh, so standard. Maybe I have uh, only five minutes, so again, I mean, as I explained, there are several, three different uh, protocols, but uh, standard harmonization uh, are going on at the uh, mo most famous project is Concordia project, and uh, people are working on together to harmonize uh, these protocols, and here is uh, some uh, example but I don't have a time to explain this but so if you are interested in I'm gonna 
send out these slides. And uh, there are some use cases. For instance, uh, Samo is uh, very uh, successful successful in enterprise market and mobile and telecom. Uh, NTT also uh, provides uh, commercial services using Samo 2.0 for over 20 million users right now. And all, for instance, France Telecom in France provides over services with using Samo more than for more than uh, 50 million users. So it's a very um, popular. And also, this news is also announced was announced yesterday. Uh, Geneva, the success of successor of Microsoft. Active Directory File Server ADS FS will support SAML 2.0. So this is a uh, will have a great impact in enterprise market. I mean adoption of SAML uh, in uh, enterprise market. I think. And here is uh, some which I explained. So we are providing services over uh, 20 million users right now, and. This is important. Uh, lessons learned. Um, so, system analysis and design of identity management systems should consider migration procedure and troubleshooting problem tracking is very important because, as I explained in a canonical view of identity, identity it's very complicated. So, if something wrong with identity, it's really difficult to trace back because I mean on purpose we make it difficult so that so I mean if something wrong it's really difficult to I mean trace and uh, right now I mean there's no liability scheme that makes everyone happy especially a relying party by definition rely uh, authentication rely on uh, rely on uh, IDP for the authentication. So if something wrong happens at the IDP, who should be responsible or who is liable? That is a, a problem we haven't solved yet. And good news is eliminating login barrier will increase service usage. Actually, in some cases, I mean this, we observed this in uh, in constantly in different cases in France and in Japan, uh, more than 203% increase of usage we observed. Actually, because, I mean, or oh, maybe I'm going to explain if you are interested in. Uh, and uh, some are adopted by e-government in the world, more than, in this case, more than uh, Across to 30 government uh, organizations are adopting SAMO. And identity as a service are becoming a very uh, important trend. And then uh, in, this, in, in this year, um, already two, I mean, several startups are established for the identity as a service. So it's a uh, becoming an important trend, I guess. And next generation network application, and also, uh, maybe I'm gonna explain some, let me, and also another use case is, is digital TV, and also uh, mobile is also important uh, application. We have developed uh, IDP on mobile phone, so it's an independent server on uh, running on a mobile phone, so that you can use uh, uh, strong authentication uh, of uh, mobile phone for the for the uh, web web sub web services. For instance, right now, I mean, mobile phone has uh, many authentication mechanisms like PKI, fingerprint recognition, so, so that kind of 
I mean, authentication functionality can be used. With this uh, mechanism, you can use that uh, authentication functionality for the web access. And that's about it. So uh, the conclusion is oh, uh, conclusion is uh, harmonization is important and it's in uh, in progress and identity management could bring more service usage, better customer retain rate, and the reduction in costs of customer support. And for for successful identity management, the employers need to take the identity life cycle into. Uh, consideration and put, put troubleshooting measure in design phase and careful negotiate and agree upon business contra contract among stakeholders and future agenda future research agendas uh, include these these things so thank you any questions Thank you very much.